The race distance, 41 and a half miles. And I'm assisted today by Roger Burnett, former Grand Prix rider, former TT winner, very much a superbike rider in his own right. And I think it's fair to say, Roger, you know the Alton Park circuit intimately. It's an absolutely superb track, Barry. I think we're in for an absolutely cracker of a race here. Um, all of the top men are on the first two rows of the grid. Um, they've all had a particularly good qualifying um, session. They've been here previously this year um, for another championship race, so it's not like it's the first time for them here this year. So I think they're all pretty well settled in. The Ducatis are going to take some beating, um, but then Jim Moody on the Honda on the front row has got everything to prove. Well, such has been the domination of the Ducatis in World Superbike and indeed in the National Championship that overnight the FIM, the international governing body, have passed a rule which means that the previous advantage in weight enjoyed by the Ducatis has been cut back, so they have increased the weight at world level, but that has yet to filter through to the national scene. So for today at least, we still have some very light very manoeuvrable, extremely quick Ducatis. And the problem here at Alton Park will be their drive out of the bends. Now, the factory Hondas, and indeed the Yamahas, and to a lesser extent the Kawasaki's, who have previously dominated British superbike racing over so many years, until the Norton came along, of course, uh, last season, are really struggling to match the power. The Ducati V-Twin, can be a bigger engine, up to 1,000 cc for the twin-cylinder variety, which is what the Ducati is, of course, but when it comes to multis, the four-cylinder Japanese version, then they are restricted to 750 cc's. So there's obviously a capacity advantage, clearly a power advantage, and the Ducatis, Roger, are that much lighter, and they're proving to be invincible. Yes, they are, but uh, I do think that they are beatable. Um, perhaps not today, but that remains to be seen. And that's a superb shot of Nick Brook in the background, up through Clay Hill, and we'll see the bikes lifting the front wheels. That's Druids, um, the 110 mile an hour fourth gear right hand bend, which has a difficult exit because the bikes go quite light over there before coming down to the very last corner before the start and finish area, Lodge Corner. Taken in second gear, you can see the bikes flicking from side to side. That's not trying to get fuel down into the carburetors, but trying to keep the heat into the tyres as they're all cruising round now to complete and assemble up onto the grid for the start of this first race. 41 and a half miles, and it's not been a quiet night for many of the competitors. Matt Llewellyn, for example, had problems with his engine late yesterday, and throughout the night they changed the engine gearbox assembly in its entirety because Llewellyn number four had problems. Across the front row, Hislop on pole, Jamie Whittam, Ray Stringer, Jim Moody and Matt Llewellyn. Those are the fastest five from qualifying yesterday and the front row for round two of this International Superbike Championship. Fifteen laps then. Forty-one and a half miles. And Moody was creeping there a little bit, but it's a great start by number two, Moody, the Honda rider. Llewellyn, though, has had a really cracking start, number four. Matt Llewellyn, just as he did at Brands Hatch in round one, rocketed away off the line and leads the pack down towards the left-hander at Cascades, along then Lakeside. Matt Llewellyn, number four, leads. Jim Moody, number two, in second place. And that was a good start by Moody, but Llewellyn already opening out. He had clutch problems as well overnight. Just look at the lead already. That fast left-hander there, taken hard, 120 miles now. This is the right-hander, down into second gear. Matt Llewellyn leads, and Moody now coming under pressure from Steve Hislop. No sign yet of Jamie Whittam. Jamie Whittam in something like sixth place, and there's Whittam number 69 in your picture now going through. His slot, Roger, if he can get into the lead and pull away, just maybe he can open some space. Well, his slot made a very, very professional manoeuvre at the hairpin. He conned Jim Moody into taking a tight line and then slipped up the inside of him coming out to take that second spot, but Matt Llewellyn's got his head down. 
Hislop second, Moody third. As you can see them streaming through now into Druid's Bend, 110 miles an hour through here. Fourth gear, the tyres won't quite be at the correct working temperature yet, so still we won't be seeing them trying 100% yet. They'll probably settle down for one or two laps. It's Ian Simpson on bike number one in fourth spot, so that's the current champion in fourth spot. And Jamie Whitton really does need to get a move on. He's down in fifth place at the moment as they come through and complete the first lap. Now, this is better stuff. We've got the Hondas running in third and fourth, so maybe we're going to see an end to the Ducati domination of this class. Look at Jim Moody, number two. Look at Ian Simpson, number one, in fourth place. Both Honda mounted. Then it's James Whittam in fifth, who didn't get the start he would have wanted to have had. Race leader then, Steve Hislop and Matt Llewellyn. We are with Matt Llewellyn in second place, number four. Ahead of him, the 11 times Isle of Man TT winner, Steve Hislop, who really has come to terms with the Ducati and really loves this Alton Park circuit. Very smooth, flowing style of Hislop. Now, just watch him. Roger, your opinion, I guess. Well, Hislop's doing everything just right. His bike is working perfectly. Matt Llewellyn is trying to uh, keep in his slipstream there. You can see Hislop, he'll come up out of the screen. He'll right-handed now around Nickerbrook, 110 miles an hour through here in fourth gear. Over across to the right-hand side of the track, then left, pointing the bike up the hill. The front wheel slightly lifting there. But Matt Llewellyn doing everything that Hislop's doing at this stage, and I think once we see them, the riders all settle down, that Whitten will come to the front to play, and then we'll really have um, a good scrap for the lead. Well, Llewellyn, as I say, changed his engine to gearbox. He had clutch slip late yesterday. He had a head gasket problem. This then, the spare engine, the spare engine going very well indeed as they go over the line again. Hislop in the lead, number 11. Up into third place, it looks as though Whittam has now come through into third. Simpson is down in fifth, but the Honda pair of Jim Moody and Ian Simpson going very well indeed. James Whittam, number 69, up into third place. A look over the shoulder from the 11 of Steve Hislop, just to see where his arch rival is. Hislop in the championship on 24 points, and the points are awarded and James Whittam, the third place man now, we're riding with him, and he has to get past the second place man, number four, Matt Llewellyn, if he's to have a clear track, and they seem to be pulling away. Well, it's quite deceptive. Um, as you can see there, Jamie Whittam bike number 69 is coming closer to them. Um, he had some, some, he's got the fastest lap as well, James Whittam, so yes, he is wanting to come to the front. Yes, he isn't wanting to get, for his lap to get too far ahead of him. His strategy for this race, according to team manager Rob McElnay, who manages the Whittam team, was that they were going to let Hislop run at the front, Whittam to come from behind, because previously Whittam has led, Hislop's hung on with Whittam all the way through, and they wanted to change the tactics a bit for this one. It appears that it's working out, although I don't think Jamie Whittam wanted Hislop probably to get away quite uh, as well as he has done, but uh, it looks like Whittam's got things in control, and we're looking now the view that Matt Llewellyn's got of Steve Hislop leading the race. Matt Llewellyn currently second place. There we have it on bike number four as they come through the start and finish line. Before hard on the brakes, down three gears to third gear for this old hall corner. Then back into fourth, back into fifth gear. Slight right hand kink there, and then left through cascades. And you can see Whittam is catching all the time. The flowing style of the round. <laughs> they both look over the shoulder just to see where Jamie Whittam is. They're all expecting him to come past. But I was about to say the flowing style of Steve Hislop in the lead is attributed mainly to his 250cc class experience when, of course, in the 90 stroke 91 season, he was British champion on the 250cc Honda. So that means he can maintain high corner speed. He goes in very smoothly. He flows through the bends. And again, he's looking, so Hislop, I suspect, a little bit concerned as to where the opposition is. And James Whittam now making a bid for that second place and taking it. So number 69, Jamie Whittam, with a wriggle of protest from the Ducati, moves into second place. And we are now chasing Hislop from Jamie Whittam's perspective. This is just how close he is. This is the racing line. And Whittam now has a job of work to do. If he's to retain an unbeaten record in this three-round series, 
He has to pass race leader number 11, Steve Hislop, and that will be no easy task, Roger. This, you can see, is um, that's Matt Llewellyn in front of James Whittam. So we're on bike with James Whittam. The front wheel lifted there on Llewellyn's bike, which cost him a little bit of drive. He had to close the throttle back. Whittam actually went past there, and Hislop chasing Hislop in front. So that was the shot that Jamie Whittam had. And this is the leading trio, and it's Hislop into Cascades from James Whittam. And James Whittam is now on a charge. Hislop looks over his shoulder, can see James Whittam. And there you can see on bike with Whittam, Hislop goes round Island Bend, the left knee touching the road there. The rider's wearing a plastic scraper on that knee. You can see Hislop's knee touching the road, just propping the bike up, opening the throttle, getting the back end just to slide a little bit as he accelerates out of the hairpin there, up towards the Fulston chicane. But I must say, Hislop's riding that bike extremely well, as is Llewellyn, because at the end of the day, you'd have to class Whittam as a world-class rider and is capable of World Championship honours. Well, number four, Matt Llewellyn, and we're with him now, still hanging on to that third place. He's very much in touch with the two Ducatis ahead of him. Ian Simpson, riding very well still, is in fourth place, according to our monitor here. We'll confirm that just as soon as we can. But these three, synchronised action from these three. Hislop, number 11, leads from Jamie Whitten, number 69, in second place. And a wriggle from Matt Llewellyn as he dropped down. And right-hander now. And what Hislop has to do, of course, is keep the door closed. They go down and out over Deer Leap. Across the start-finish line again, which isn't really a straight. It's a very quick left-hander all the way into Old Hall Corner, down through the brakes, down through three gears to third gear, Old Hall Corner, 90 miles an hour, up through fourth, fifth and sixth, down to the left-hander at Cascades, fourth gear, 90 miles an hour along Lakeside, again accelerating up fourth, fifth, sixth, with Whittam again as he goes at Island Bend, down to fifth gear, 120 miles an hour, he takes a look, but his slot is tight on the kerb, and now all the way down, stamping on the gears on the front brake hard into the banked hairpin. Second gear, 70 miles an hour, would you believe, out of there. Up through the gearbox again. Third, fourth, fifth, down towards Fulston chicane. Taken in second at about 60. And Hilltop then will be the next bit as they approach Hilltop and then the fast run. This is where you'll see whether Whittam has got the speed it needs, and I think he has. Well, he's pulled out of the slipstream, but just looking at this stage, I think he's quite happy for his lot to still lead this race. Um, on board with Whittam, you can see that's the view that Jamie Whittam has of Hislop's Ducati, the two pipes there coming out of the seat, those are the exhaust pipes, as again, Whittam offers the bike up the inside of Hislop, but not going to go through at this stage. He'll be waiting. He's, he's not in a rush. He'll be wanting to wear Hislop down and surprise him during the closing stages of the race. Again, another look up the inside of Hislop as he comes into Lodge, but not wanting to make that move. It's interesting to note the different riding styles. Hislop tends to let the bike run quicker into the corners. He's not as good at braking as Jamie Whittam. He carries more corner speed. He always pulls a gap on, his, on um, Whittam going into the corners, but then Whittam's right with him away again on the exit. So quite a contrast, really. Whittam's looking around the outside, that's to move up the inside of him on the exit. But again, Hislop looks over his shoulder. Jamie Whittam's still there, and this is going to be quite a cat and mouse game, Barry, towards the latter stages. Well, for your information, Ray Stringer, number 17, has come up to fourth place, and Ian Simpson, number one, the reigning double British champion, has dropped down to fifth. But this is the battle for the lead. And still Matt Llewellyn very, very much in touch. Llewellyn, I remind you, had two third places at round one at Brands Hatch in each of the two legs. And it looks as though he's on target here for another third place. Over the top of the hill, Llewellyn in third. So Hislop leads. James Whittam, there's the first three. We're looking now for the fourth place man, number 17, Ray Stringer. Then it's Ian Simpson on the first of the Hondas, number one. Simpson in fifth, behind him, number five, Michael Rutter. Back with the race leader, however, and it is now developing into a two-man struggle as they exit Druids. Whittam almost over the curb onto the grass, but now he's looking at the inside, flicking the throttle hard on the brake, goes Hislop as they go into launch, dropping out of the corner, and Whittam 
took the advantage there, goes through in front. Jamie Whitton leads, and Hislop is in second. He won't be pleased with that, Roger. Well, it's uh, it's a question of anything you can do, I can do better here, and um, I think Hislop, to be fair, has actually allowed Whitton through there. Um, this is the this is the overtaking manoeuvre. You can see Hislop runs wide. Whitton takes the advantage and powers down the hill up through the deer's leap, and I. I honestly think that Islop um, allowed that manoeuvre to take place. He's going to try and run with Jamie Whittam now. He knows that Whittam was would have pounced on the last lap anyway, so better that he knows his tactics. And the fastest lap there to Jamie Whittam, 135.38, that's 0.38 of the second outside of the existing lap record, which Jamie Whittam actually holds. So through the chicane, Islop in his wheel tracks. Quite a lot of physical effort uh, is required to, to ride these bikes. The Ducatis are quite a lot lighter. And there's the fourth place man, Ray Stringer, who is Hislop's teammate, Ian Simpson. Rutter going through. And the front wheels just lifting a little bit as they go up through there. Back with the leaders. And it's Whittam from Hislop. Whittam may, at this stage, try and pull out a gap. If he can't do that, then he's going to save his tyres and put all, all his effort into the last lap, but it looks as though he's probably pulling a small advantage at the moment, Barry. Well, number 69, Whittam, seventh in the World Superbike Championship at the end of 1994, and had a brilliant ride in the Donington round, the British round, this year. So the motorcycle that Jamie Whittam is riding is a very quick bike indeed, and I think Steve Hislop knows that. I was talking to him earlier, and he said that he just has no answer, he just feels that whatever is inside the engine is just a little bit quicker than what he's riding. And Hislop, after Brands, and I'm talking about number 11, the second place man, went off to ride in the order, oh, looked down. Now, it looked as though Jamie Whitton was just glancing down at the bike. Could be a ruse, I don't know, but certainly he was looking down as though he wasn't quite sure about something that was happening underneath him. And Hislop now is very close again at the hairpin, might just be that Jamie Whitton has got a slight problem. We'll have to see. We're only just over half distance in this race with eight laps completed. They are on lap nine of 15. And Steve Hislop now is stalking Jamie Whitton. And to pick up on Roger Burnett's point, it's better to be behind him at this stage in the race to find out exactly what the Huddersfield flyer is going to do in terms of track craft, in terms of where he's going to position himself on the circuit. That's Ian Simpson, the faller there. So Ian Simpson was really pushing very, very hard. He was having to work extremely hard to get the Honda to even begin to stay with the Ducatis. He was running in fifth place, and the marshal there looking after a very second-hand Ian Simpson, and I'll give you an update on Simpson's condition just as soon as I can. Tailender moves out of the way as Whittam goes through. Hislop in hot pursuit over the line again, and we will keep our eyes open just in case this race is brought to an early conclusion as a result of Simpson's tumble, but Matt Llewellyn's still there in third. We are at two-thirds distance, 10 laps gone of 15, and this battle, Roger, is far from over. It's far from over, but the, the battle has raged prior to the event in the press, and Whittam um, has... Oh, Hislop has got out as saying, I can beat Whittam, and Whittam is obviously rising to the occasion and saying, oh, no, you can't, because he's controlling the race from the front. Interestingly, Jamie Whittam has slowed the pace of the race. They're actually lapping a second slower than their qualifying times or a second slower than the, 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 their earlier laps in the race. And that caption tells the story, but it's still Whittam in front of Hislop, Llewellyn in third place, and that was the point at which Ian Simpson crashed through the chicane, but it looked as if they'd got him off the track all right. Uh, we're going through Nickerbrook now, and Llewellyn riding quite a lonely race, but I must take my hat off to him. An exceptionally good race Llewellyn is riding. But it's all about these two. The winner is going to be one of these two men, James Whittam or Steve Hislop. Well, these two still with Matt Llewellyn now in a solitary third place. Ray Stringer is some five seconds adrift. Hislop has by no means given up. He's going in really hard. Just watch the front end of the bike shudder as he went in hard on the brakes over the line again they come having exited dear leap they're going up now towards old hall corner and just watch the contrasting styles as james Whitton, the race
race leader, number 69, almost climbs off the front of the bike as he tips it into the bends. And watch the style at this left-hander. Not quite as aggressive as he does on right-handers. He's very, very determined on right-handers. He runs wide there. His slot on a slightly tighter line, but James Whittam, race leader, with a clear track ahead of him. The left-hander at Island Bend, fifth gear, 120 miles an hour, then down, fourth, third, into second, 70 at the hairpin, and is there any sight of his slot? Yes, there is, he's right down the rear wheel, and a big wriggle from Whittam's Ducati as he hooked it up through the gearbox, Fulston chicane again, his slot much the smoother of the two, Number 11, Steve Hislop, and look at Matt Llewellyn having that lonely, lonely third place. Llewellyn, though, a good, very, very consistent performer. Fourth in last year's championship, third in this race, but there's your second place man. Number 11, Steve Hislop, 33 years of age, now resident on the Isle of Man, formerly from Hoyk, and now lives in the Isle of Man, as I say. His beloved Isle of Man, where he scored 11 memorable TT victories. You can see the right hands blipping the throttle as they go to change down the gearbox for Lodge Corner. Quite a lot of physical effort to ride these machines, although these Ducatis are more like a 250cc machine than some of the four-cylinder bikes. You'll see as Jamie Whittam exits the corner that he crouches down low beneath the perspex bubble on the front of the bike that's for maximum aerodynamic effect before again coming out of the screen and this looks like jamie whittam's going for a fast lap this time i think he's lulled steve hislop into a sense of false security by lapping reasonably slow by these guys um, standards and now he's going to have a go there is a back marker coming up as they go towards the hairpin and that guy is not going to get in the way because he's moved out onto a wider line and Hislop nips through inside of David Hicken. So it's still the two of them. I thought Jamie Whitten was going to be able to get away, Barry, but it doesn't appear that that's the case. Well, Hislop, as you say, number 11, just hanging on. Now Matt Llewellyn has got David Higgins, number 82, to contend with. I don't know, it just could be that Steve Hislop doesn't want to let Whittam get too far away in the points tally because the gap between them is just six points. There are 15 for the win and 12 for second place. So every race that Whittam wins and every race in which Hislop finishes second means that the gap stretches by a further three points. And this is only a very short championship, just three races, three rounds with two races in each round. And we are on the third race. Matt Llewellyn then with a tail ender ahead of him and Llewellyn now has to get past and he does of course very very safely over the line Matt Llewellyn goes and his slot now is as close as ever Jamie Whittam's pit board will be telling him how close his slop is but of course Roger he'll be hearing that booming Ducati behind him as well well even if he's wearing earplugs and most of the riders do these days he'll still hear that deep note of the Ducati behind him as he heals the bike over around these uh, lovely bends here at Alton Park I don't think he'll be too flustered, though, Barry. I have to say that um, the lap times are not um, as, they, as quick as they were early in the race. I expect that we'll see those increase during the latter stages, and we are in the latter stages now. I think we're about uh, three laps to go. So Jamie Whittam is doing exactly what he said he was going to do, and that is let his slot believe that he was in with a chance of winning and then go hard on the last couple of laps to see um, if he can pull out an advantage. Whether he can or not will remain to be seen, but I would say that Hislop's bike is certainly handling better than the Now that could be because Hislop has a better setting, or it could be that Hislop is riding his bike more aggressively and he does move about on the bike a lot, thus causing it to wobble and look out of shape. So that could be affecting tyre wear, we'll have to wait and see. Just to illustrate the supremacy of these Italian-built V-twins, uh, I'd like to tell you that, for want of a better phrase, the leader of the four-cylinder race, and that's the Japanese bikes, in seventh place is number 34, Paul Brown, on the first of the multi-cylinder Japanese bikes, and he is some 18 seconds away from Jamie Whittam, who currently leads this race. Now, clearly, the governing body has taken a decision at world level to handicap these V 
fearsome beasts. And in order for the racing to be more equal at national level, we're going to have to do something similar because we have Ducatis leading, Hislop is in second, Llewellyn is in third, Ray Stringer's in fourth, Mike Rutter's in fifth, Dean Ashton is in sixth on another Ducati. Oh, Brian Morrison is seventh now on a Kawasaki. So Brian Morrison, number nine, has gone. And there's Paul Brown. Paul Brown down into eighth place. Ahead of him, number nine, Brian Morrison, has just gone past. So this is really the four-cylinder battle between these two. Number nine, Brian Morrison, leading number 34, Paul Brown. But this is the race leader who has now a huge gap over his slot. And could it be that his slot's got problems? He's not looking good. He's certainly not. Matt Llewellyn's threatening now. Hislop is going to be lucky to hang on to second place. Whether he feels that he's got a comfortable enough lead to retain second place, whether he has a problem or not remains to be seen. But Jamie Whittam has pulled out an enormous gap, too big a gap just for it to be that Hislop is suggesting that he's quite happy with second. So obviously we don't have information on what the problem is. But you can see Llewellyn closing on Hislop. And this is, this is going to be now the dice for second place as this way through Deer's Leap and over the start and finish Jamie Whittam now is is on his last lap that's the gap to second and third place man is looking very threatening so number four then 27 year old Matt Llewellyn there's your race leader 27 year old Jamie Whittam from Huddersfield who is going on to his third consecutive win in this six race series so, coming up to half distance in the series, Whittam then has yet to be beaten. But the battle for second is between Matt Llewellyn and an ailing Steve Hislop, number 11, who dropped back dramatically in that last lap, obviously with a problem. We're waiting, and there is Llewellyn. Steve Hislop then will be lucky to finish at this rate. So, Matt Llewellyn, number four, up to second place. Your new second place man then from Glenfield in Leicester, there's Hislop still in third, clearly Roger with a massive problem, and in real danger now of losing third place to a rapidly advancing race stringer number 17. Here's Whittam though, 69 on the plate, wheel in the air, heading now for his third win. Just a few hundred yards of the Alton Park International Circuit for him to do, down, up over the top, not far for Whittam to go now as he goes into the last right-hander. The right-hander at Lodge, down through Deer Leap, over the line, chequered flag ahead, a wheelie for James Whittam, a massive wheelie, and the race is his, 15 laps, second place number four, Matt Llewellyn, so he takes second, and the question is, does his slop hang on to third? Yes, he does, and Stringer pushing hard, but Hislop gets third. The winner, however, three in a row for number 69, Jamie Whittam. Another win for Jamie Whittam, 700 pounds and 15 points to the good. Llewellyn came in second. Hislop nursed a very sick overheating engine to third. Stringer, Mike Rutter, and Dean Ashton look at the Ducatis. Now, what that's done to the overall standings is extended Whittam's lead. Hislop is still in second, however. Matt Llewellyn consolidated third, Stringer on 22, and Michael Rutter their fifth on 20 points. And we'll have further... Stretched his lead from Steve Hislop, who had a slight mechanical problem in the closing stages of leg one. Llewellyn, Stringer in fourth, Michael Rutter in fifth, Jim Moody and Ian Simpson, who will not be starting this race, joint sixth. 15 laps ahead of them, and reminder, pole position Hislop, Whittam, Stringer, Moody, Llewellyn. The question I have for everyone, can Hislop turn the tables on the flying James Whittam and pull off a win? But again, a good start by Matt Llewellyn, number four. Llewellyn is really dynamite. And the fall of somebody on the grass, and number 18 running wide there, and that's Alex Buckingham on the Yamaha. He was running wide, and there is a fall. Meanwhile, on the first lap, the race goes on. A terrific start again by number four, Matt Llewellyn, who is carrying, in actual fact, two of our cameras. He's out in front. He started leg one in the same fashion. He started at Brands Hatch by leading the second leg as well. So he really is electric out of the gate. Ray Stringer's in second. That's good news for number 17, Ray Stringer from Stoke Golding. 
who has to work very hard to come through, but now he's in second. This will help a lot. The interesting point was that the two favourites for the race, James Whittam on bike 69 and Steve Hislop, are currently in fifth and sixth positions. So they have a lot of work to do to get past the four guys that are in front of them. No doubt that will happen as the race unfolds. But it's also nice to see Jim Moody on bike number two up with the leading bunch as Michael Rutter there on bike number five. So we've got all the top contenders really in this first bunch and it's a question of them just settling the machines down, getting the tyres nice and warm and all bedded in as Whittam, as I say, Whittam, James Whittam moves up to fourth. So, and this is on board with James Whittam coming through the start and finish area and you can see Ray Stringer, Jim Moody, and Matt Llewellyn in front as they heel the bikes over at 90 miles an hour through this right-hand bend in third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear. And that was the shot. Oh, and James Whittam's in all sorts of trouble and he's on the grass. Whittam's definitely on the grass and that is probably his race over. Oh, that was incredible. He got the bike out of shape as we went down the hill and it locked up the rear end and he couldn't make the corner and that, unfortunately, is the end of James Whittam's race. Well, what is sensational is that that's elevated Jim Moody into a very good second place. He was there already. Stringer in third. Matt Llewellyn then home and dry in the lead at the moment. Hislop moving through into fourth, having just passed number five. Mike Rutter, terrific stuff. Unfortunate for James Whittam. Good to know, though, that he's fit and well, but one thing he won't be doing is going away with four wins in a row. He, in fact, will not score any points in this leg, and that gives Steve Hislop a real chance now to move into the championship lead. But in order to do that, Hislop number 11, who is currently in fourth place, there he is, has to win this race. The interesting thing is if you watch the exhaust of Moody's bike on bike number two, you can see the flames coming out and that's due to that machine is a fuel injection machine and it's carburating. When the throttle's closed, it's loading up with fuel and, and, and setting fire. So look at the flames coming out of the rear of that exhaust. There it goes. And that must be quite off-putting for Ray Stringer there. He's not going to want his bush tash singed on that, is he? Looking Rear-facing now from race leader number four, Matt Llewellyn at the pursuing Honda of Jim Moody. And now we really do have an international superbike race on our hands. Llewellyn pulling away on the powerful Ducati from the Honda. He just leaves them on that bit. Look at the gap. There's Llewellyn on his way to what could be his first win in this class. And that will be great stuff indeed. Llewellyn has had two-thirds and a second place. Is he on now for 15 points and a win? Steve Hislop obviously has to do something about it. Hislop is now up to third. Jim Moody down to fourth. Mike Rutter number five in fifth. Hislop senses that he could have a win on his hands, but he's got a very determined race stringer number 17 ahead of him with the green helmet. Stringer from Stoke Golding, having got the Ducati this season, has been a real force to be reckoned with, and he's going to keep Hislop behind him, whatever it takes. Of course, Stringer on bike number 17 and Hislop are teammates, so um, let's not overlook that. And Hislop looks like he's got a problem, so Hislop is dropping back. Definitely a problem for Steve Hislop on bike 11. Moody and Rutter have both passed him as the flames keep shooting out of Jim Moody's exhaust pipe. But Hislop had a definite problem, whether he's just giving them all a chance or what, I don't really know, because he certainly doesn't look to be in difficulties as he comes through the start and finish area. So we'll just keep our eye on Steve Hislop's bike. This is on board with the leader, Matt Llewellyn, looking back at bike number 17, Ray Stringer. And you can see that they've got quite a gap now on the three riders pursuing them. And the fastest lap there to Matt Llewellyn, 135.88. Ray Stringer, number 17, in second place, is looking incredibly determined. There he is, Stringer, who's had a lot of success in national competition over the years. We're looking back now from the race leader, and you can see yourselves just how close it is. Three, maybe four bike lengths, that's all, and they've stretched out now. Hislop's still in fourth, so whatever problem he had, it was just a blip, because he's gone back again past Moody. This is the race leader again 
going away from Ray Stringer's Ducati. I remind you that Matt Llewellyn, the race leader number four, changed his complete engine gearbox assembly last night, finished the job off this morning. It also appears to have cured his clutch problem. He had a slipping clutch late yesterday afternoon. And I think he senses, and I'm sure his pit crew sense, that he is on his way possibly to a win. He's got to stay on board. He's got to keep Stringer behind him. And Stringer number 17 really senses that he too could win this second superbike leg here at Alton Park. And Ray Stringer is just stalking Matt Llewellyn, looking for some way through. Llewellyn wriggling just a little bit as he came out of Deer Leap. Across the line they go again, down through the gearbox, third gear, 90 miles an hour. Matt Llewellyn accelerated away down through the avenue, fourth, fifth, Six, they just bear right before the left-hander, the fourth gear left-hander here at Cascades, taken at about 90 miles an hour, up through the gearbox again, fifth into sixth along Lakeside, and then the very tight island bend, which is about 120, that's a lot tighter than it looks, before the second gear right-hand banked hairpin, the Shell Oils corner, Stringer right on the rear wheel of Matt Llewellyn as they head off down towards Fulston's. His slot being dropped away, but he's still there in third. His slot up to third again. Whatever it was, Roger has gone away. Well, whatever it's gone, it's gone away. And my tip is that this, at the end of this lap, you'll see his slot with the fastest lap of the race because this is a sensational lap from Steve Hislop. He's passed Michael Rutter, who previous to this had the fastest lap. He's now in pursuit of teammate Ray Stringer and race leader Matt Llewellyn as they go up Clay Hill and round, flicking right into Drew. It's 110 miles an hour, knee touching the road. Watch the front wheels lift slightly as they come out of there. That was Stringer's lifting. He's got tucked down. He's going to go down the outside, inside of Matt Llewellyn to take the lead, and he has done that. That's going to slow Matt Llewellyn down a little bit and allow his lot to catch up. So whatever the problem was with his lot, certainly recovered, and his lot's on the charge. Well, I was dreading the fact that this race would become processional and that Jamie Whittam would streak off. But, of course, Jamie Whittam went adrift. We're now looking from Matt Llewellyn ahead at Ray Stringer, who just overtook him and took the lead. But Llewellyn's still charging very, very hard indeed. This race, though, has proved to be a fantastically close one. With Ducatis in the top four, it's true, but Jim Moody, number two, on the first of the Hondas, chased by number 34, Paul Brown, in sixth place. Then we have in seventh place, Sean Muir on the Colchester Motorcycles Kawasaki, and the four-cylinder machines are really putting some pressure on in this second leg. His slot, though, in third, number 11, and he needs to win if he's to go away from Alton Park leading the championship. Matt Llewellyn similarly would dearly love a win, as indeed would race leader Ray Stringer. Well, it certainly was the fastest lap that his lot had done during the race. He's now in third and looking very threatening indeed. Jim Moody on the first, first four-cylinder machine is being tailed off slightly. This is Matt Llewellyn on board, and that is Ray Stringer coming up the inside of him, and that's Lodge Corner, and that's just how it looks from when you're sat on the machine. And Stringer still is in front with Llewellyn second and his lot third. Now, race tactics have got to start coming into this soon, and I would imagine that his lot's going to try and get past Llewellyn as soon as he possibly can. We're still relatively early in the race, about a third, just over a third race distance, so his lot's not going to panic too much at this stage, but I must say that all of these top five guys are really lapping quite quick. Yeah, that's a good point, Roger. It's a 41 and a half mile race, and uh, they're on lap seven now, so we're not quite at half distance yet. There's still a long way to go in terms of potential machine problems, potential rider fatigue, potential tires getting out of shape and causing all sorts of problems. And Hislop with Llewellyn, Hislop number 11 in third, and this is where he's going to go for it. Is Matt Llewellyn going to give him enough room? No, they all catapult out of there. Slingshot, I think, is the word out towards the Falston chicane and his slops bike is pretty quick but is it going to have the legs for Matt Llewellyn's Ducati as they go down over the hilltop towards Nickerbrook? Matt Llewellyn that's the man chasing him Steve Hislop who pulls out of the slipstream not quite 
fast enough, but my goodness me, that was close. Hislop with his knee almost on the tarmac. Llewellyn in second. Ahead of them both is Ray Stringer. And they were then they're coming up to the right hand and now at Druids. His slot looking still at the inside, and they've by no means shaken off young Michael Rutter, who's riding number five in fourth place. And still Jim Moody is there. So a much, much closer race this time. Look at his slot going round the outside, having a look as they drop down through Deer Leap across. Oh dear me, across the line again. Great stuff this, Roger. And my money, I think is on Steve Hissler. Well, we don't know quite what problem Hislop's riding with, if at all, um, of course, so that needs to be considered. But he's certainly crawling all over the back of um, Matt Llewellyn like a rash at the moment, and Ray Stringer's not going to <laughs> be uh, spared either, because uh, as we talk, Hislop's gone through, and he's past Matt Llewellyn, and now it's just a question of getting past his teammate in front of him, but then there are plenty of laps to do. We see there lap eight out of 15, so just about half race distance just over, so Hislop's going to take his time. I think that's the last we've seen of a charge from Matt Llewellyn, and I think the race win is definitely going to come from the Devi Mead Ducati team of either Hislop or Stringer. Ray Stringer's track record, he's the race leader, number 17, is two-fourths and a fifth, and Hislop going for the lead and takes it, number 11, Steve Hislop, who has had two second places and a third, and if this stays the way it is, he will move into the championship lead because the championship leader, Jamie Whittam, is out of the running. Hislop very much on a charge, leading beautifully. Ray Stringer with a wheel in the air. Matt Llewellyn tucked in. Number five, Mike Rutter with a huge wheelie. And Jim Moody, a Herculean task on the Honda. The fire-breathing Honda in fifth place. Hislop, of course, a super fit athlete, really. Trains very, very hard indeed in the Isle of Man, where he lives, where he's set himself um, such really a, a standard by winning those 11 Isle of Man TTs signified by the number on his bike number 11 he does a lot of mountain biking he does a lot of jet ski riding certainly a fit lad and goes about his, his racing in a very professional way indeed he's setting himself a task now of working hard to try and pull away from his teammate Stringer he appears to be doing that and and Llewellyn swung through into second place, so that's Llewellyn through, and that would, could mean that Hislop has got a charge on his hand, because if Stringer would, were working to team orders and going to block Llewellyn, then that's foiled, because Llewellyn now threw into second. That also means, in terms of the mathematics, that if Matt Llewellyn should finish in second place, he will move to within one point of Jamie Whittam's 45-point total. Uh, that they came into this race with, and Hislop, as I said earlier, will go ahead because Hislop will move on to 49 points. And this is the overtaking manoeuvre from Matt Llewellyn. Up the inside there of Ray Stringer, that's into Lodge Corner. And quite a, quite a fabulous move there from Llewellyn. I must say he's riding exceptionally well. Well, I thought 1994 was the best season Matt Llewellyn had ever had, and he was coming good, but this year, since getting the Ducati going as well as it, it is now, he really has blossomed. And I think we're seeing Matt Llewellyn at the pinnacle, almost, of his career. Of course, he would dearly love to become British champion in this class. He would very dearly love to win the Super Cup, and, of course, maybe then move on to bigger things in terms of international superbike competition, but certainly... A good second place in this race and running well and getting better all the time. And that's Stringer. That is Ray Stringer. And Stringer went down very, very heavily indeed. It was all locked up. There was a lot of smoke coming from the back. And the bike has all but disintegrated. Ray Stringer fell very heavily indeed. The bike, by the look of it, has actually gone right over the top of the Armco barrier. Um, we would need to look at a replay of that to actually see what was happening, but it looks to me like there's oil all over the back tyre. Um, and this is the shot of it, and that's Matt Llewellyn coming into the picture now, and Stringer's certainly all completely locked up, and that was definitely a problem with the engine. Um, 
I would imagine the engine compl has, has locked up, either seized up, Conrod broken, but there was certainly a lot of oil on the back tyre, and Stringer had no choice but to put the thing straight into the bales. I have to say the marshals were extremely lucky because at that particular point on the circuit there were several marshals and by some miraculous means the flying bike of Ray Stringer missed the marshals who were gathered at that particular spot. Stringer was actually off the bike at the time it went into the tyres so straw bales as well cushioned the impact and we will bring you news on Ray Stringer, the unfortunate Ray Stringer just as soon as we can but he certainly sat up immediately after the impact uh, we'll obviously be feeling a bit bruised but as soon as i've got some, inf some information on that we will of course let you know the yellow flag out meaning the riders are allowed to proceed with caution and no overtaking is permitted under the yellow flag steve hislop has his hand in the air and it appears that the race has been stopped there is a red flag hislop knew the score, put his hand up, the race is stopped due to the incident involving Ray Stringer. Well, Roger, that was uh, hectic indeed. Stringer went in there in all sorts of trouble, and he's now receiving rapid attention from the first aid people and the marshals at the scene. The, the problem is that another rider has fallen because there is oil on the track, I noticed as Steve Hislop went down into Island Bend that there is a distinct trail of oil um, and that is obviously a consequence of Ray Stringer's engine blowing. But we have another rider um, down there and obviously being attended to. The incidents which caused the stoppage of that race, let me bring you up to date with the condition of the two riders. Number 17, Ray Stringer, who went into the tyre wall, has back injuries, but is otherwise OK. He's been sitting up and smiling and chatting to the medical staff. Number 81, Martin James, has head injuries, but he too has been talking to the officials and the medical people. Both riders are being taken to hospital for X-ray and observation, but generally speaking, their condition is okay. We do have a result. The 10 laps status stood. His slot came in with the win. Matt Llewellyn was in second place. Mike Rutter was third on another Ducati. Moody and Brown brought the Hondas into fourth and fifth. And Brian Morrison, sixth for him on the Kawasaki. What that does to the championship standings puts Hislop in, le in the lead because Whittam didn't score. Matt Llewellyn just one point behind James Whittam. Rutter moves into fourth. Stringer is there on 22. And Jim Moody on the Honda, sixth on 17 